Teslas are incredible cars. They have some of the lowest drag coefficients of any car on the market today, and the Plaid version can even go from 0 to 100 km per hour in a pelvis shattering 2.2 seconds. But despite this blend of raw power and low drag, they have a potentially fatal aerodynamic flaw, and that is that they naturally produce lift. That's not a problem at low speeds, but at high speeds and around corners, it can become a huge one because that reduces how much grip you have on the road and leads to slower cornering and even crashing. Evidence of this flaw is that no Tesla is even in the top 50 times around the Nürburgring, despite many Tesla versions being able to spank almost everything in the top 50 if it were a drag race. Teslas aren't the first cars to adopt this ultra low profile though. This general car shape has actually been around since the 1930s, starting with the Chrysler Airflow, then making its way to even the Beetle, the Porsche 911, and even to the modern day Prius, Mercedes, GLE, and Honda Civic, just to name a few. This problem has always bugged me because it's like getting married to Margot Robbie and she has to permanently wear a chastity belt. Where's the fun in that? So I wanted to solve this problem, and once we test the solution on the Model Y, we're also going to test it on the Prius just to make sure that it works with cars of this shape and not just on the Model Y. So how can this impressive profile designed by the pioneers in the 1930s be fixed so that you can actually go around corners at high speed without crashing? To figure that out, we need to know why this problem comes about to begin with. This simulation shows the Tesla Model Y, which suffers greatly from this problem. We have both the flow speed and the pressure field over the car. It's traveling at 72 km per hour, which is about where the aerodynamics start to become the dominant forces on the car. And immediately, it is clear that it is very sleek. In the center plane, you can see how well the flow just zips over the entire car. The only real weakness at the front is just how blunt it is, and it really doesn't need to be considering that it is an electric car and requires minimal cooling. The underneath is also very good because they have a rounded lip, which helps reduce separation there. Then the flow over the underbody is really good because it stays attached. Looking at the pressure, we do get low values there, which helps suck down the car to the road. So it's not the underbody that is letting the car down here. And over the hood, the flow is actually really nice. Look at how little it accelerates. The flow is quite yellow, so because it is almost the same velocity as the free stream flow, the pressure doesn't drop that much. And so the hood isn't contributing to that lift of the car. And honestly, even the windshield is doing well here because we get some high pressure on it, which actually pushes the car down onto the road. So we can conclude that the lift problem of this car isn't coming from the underbody or the hood and the windshield. But if we move to the roof, we now see where the problem lies. Looking first at the velocity, see how red it becomes. That means that the flow has accelerated a lot. And as a result, the pressure drops dramatically. That low pressure is lifting the car up. And things don't get much better over the rear window either. So this region is definitely the problem. This is where the lift is being created. Knowing that, how can you fix it though? Well, one way is to flare the rear up to reduce just how curved the roof is. If you do that, the weight will become larger and that will increase the drag dramatically though. So if you were to do that, then you'd have to kick the diffuser up just as much so the flow shoots up and reduces that wake and drag. But what if there is another out of the box way? Bringing this back to fundamental aerodynamics, the only reason why this low pressure is such a problem is because the resulting force is largely upwards in the lift direction. So what if there was a flat plate on top where the same low pressure would act on, but instead of acting upwards, it acted downwards? With this design, it might be possible to really neutralize the low pressure's effect in the lift direction because the low pressure might become isolated between the two surfaces and cancel each other out. As a side note, this plate is very flat and not curved because if it were curved, then low pressure would also form on the upper surface and just create lift again. Does it work? Well, this simulation is for the flat plate addition and the front of the car is largely unaffected. The underbody is still great and the flow over the hood is pretty good too. But moving to the roof, we actually get even more flow acceleration between the plate and the roof. That is because we are effectively shoving air into that gap and it has to speed it up so it can all get through. Another important point is that over the rear window, the flow is slower the boundary layer is thicker. That would be a problem for cars with steep rear windows because the flow might separate and dramatically increase the drag. But because cars of this shape have gradual slopes, there is no danger here. For the pressure, it drops a lot and on the face of it, you might expect that this is even worse now because the rear window has even lower pressure, so that is even more force lifting it up. But because that lower pressure is also acting on the plate, we now get force pushing the car down into the road and in fact, this device is even more horizontal than the rear window, so the force coming from the low pressure is almost completely in the vertical direction. As such, it is actually producing more downforce than the rear window is producing lift, 
making this not just a device doing damage control, but actually adding to the design. In terms of the effect it has on the overall lift, the original Model Y produces 10.2 kilos of lift at 72 kph. With this plate, it produces only 5.4 kilos, almost half. For the drag, there is a penalty because the original version had a good drag coefficient of 0.25, while with this plate it is now 0.28. But that doesn't mean that this car has to have such a high drag coefficient, because Tesla added this flared lip at the rear to reduce its lift originally. They recognized the problem and tried to at least partly correct it with this device. The problem with this device is that it too has a drag penalty. So with the plate, you could remove this device and possibly still reduce the lift or reducing the drag here too. This is just the first iteration of this idea, and the reason for it reducing the lift is obvious. But why does it increase the drag? Well, remember how I said that because the plate was horizontal and the rear window wasn't, so the force coming from the low pressure is completely downwards for the plate, but it is actually at an angle for the rear window. Because of that, some of the force on the rear window is in the lift direction, but some of that force is also in the drag direction. As such, the even lower pressure we see here compared to when there is no plate also means the force in the drag direction is greater, and the plate doesn't do anything to counteract that. So does that mean if putting the plate over the window increases the drag, then putting the plate over the front window will reduce the drag and still reduce the lift? To find out, we also tested this configuration as well as another configuration where the plate is halfway between these two extremes. If you're interested, we made the video and put it on our Patreon here. Now, it's nice that this plate reduces the lift over the Tesla, but there are so many other cars out there with this exact same problem. Does this roof plate idea work with them too? To test it, we looked at a Prius. And something else we wanted to determine was, if it had to be a very thin plate, could we use a wing instead? The benefit of that is it could handle more variable flows because for a very thin plate, if you have the flow coming in at an even slightly skewed angle, it could stall and your drag would skyrocket. So we tested this plate idea, which is more a NACA 4412 airfoil, which is the standard base shape for airplanes. Notice that it is also a lot shorter than the Model Y's plate, which might reduce the drag penalty you get. Let's see if it makes a difference. For the original Prius, we get a pretty similar flow to the Tesla. The hood is pretty good, the underbody is okay. One disadvantage is that the lip at the front is sharp, and so some separation occurs. The Model Y fixed that problem. Now over the roof, the same problem occurs though. The flow accelerates, turns red, and the pressure drops. The good news is that that faster flow also results in low pressure here. I mean, it's bad news because that creates lift and instabilities at high speed, but good news in that that same problem occurs. So putting this wing plate on top now changes the flow again, but to a much lesser extent. The flow definitely does speed up under it and on top of it, behind it, the air is similar to how it was without the wing. So in a way, this new design is more successful in that it doesn't alter the flow as much. Looking at the pressure, we get incredibly low pressure underneath, and that is also to do with how much closer the underside of this plate is to the roof than for the Tesla version. And in fact, this is also because the plate is thicker, because if you look at the nose of each of the plates, they're pretty similarly spaced off the roof. But because the Prius's plate is a wing, it is thicker, and that brings the underside closer to the roof. And because the gap here is so much smaller, the flow has to accelerate so much more. Comparing the pressure to without the plate, the pressure over the rear windows, pretty similar. So you'd think that there wasn't much of an effect on the lift. I mean, if the rear windows are about the same, and there is a lot of low pressure over the top of the plate, then possibly the lift will actually be worse. Well, for the original Prius, 4.6 kilos of lift were produced. With the plate, the lift is only 1.8 kilos. And the drag option went from 0.27 to 0.29 with the plate. So that lift reduction was better than the plate on the Tesla, and the drag penalty was less. So maybe using a wing is better. But there's more to this plate than what we've shown. Now, this wing produces wingtip vortices. This vortex orbit shows that they're not big, but they are there, and that is drag. To reduce this drag, you usually put end plates on wings like this. Now for this particular application, adding these particular end plates also presents another possible benefit. So the scientific name of what is really going on here is the Venturi effect. In a Venturi tube, the flow enters a large opening, then that opening funnels down before fanning back out again. When it funnels down, the pressure drops. When it fans back out again, the pressure increases. So for this particular application, when the flow enters between the wing and the roof, area reduces and the pressure drops. Then when it exits, the area increases. And so the theory is that the pressure should increase too. If that is the case, 
then that would produce higher pressure over the rear window, reduce the lift, and even reduce the drag because now there is more force pushing backwards. That's the theory at least. On our Patreon, we also simulate what happens when you add end plates to the wing to see if we do get these improvements. If you're interested, you can find out how that went in the link below. And if you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks that you'll like this video, so check it out. Peace out, amigos.